In this video, we will review how to solve equations with absolute values. And I want to look at an example that asks us to solve the absolute value of x minus 4 minus 3x equals 2. So if I have an equation with an absolute value, I want to begin by isolating the absolute value of whatever stuff we have inside of it. So the absolute value of term, I need to get it by itself. So I'll keep the absolute value of x minus 4 where it is, but move the minus 3x to the right. So I'll add it and get this equals 3x plus 2. And now remember that if I have the absolute value of stuff term isolated and it equals some junk on the other side, I can split this up into two cases. So I'm going to remove the absolute value. But when I do, I'll either get the stuff inside is equal to the junk on the right hand side or the other possibility is that the stuff inside could be equal to the negative of the junk on the other side. So let's do that for our absolute value equation. So when I get rid of the absolute value, the stuff inside x minus 4 either equals 3x plus 2 or or the other branches that the stuff inside x minus 4 could be equal to the negative of the junk on the other side. So the negative of 3x plus 2. So notice that I put a parentheses around the 3x plus 2. That's really important. Otherwise, I'll forget that I need to distribute the negative to these terms because the negative applies to all of this junk. All right, so let's solve these. With this first equation, let's see, I can move the 2 to the left to get minus 6 and move the x to the right so that I get 2x. And then if I divide by 2, we get negative 3 equals x. So that's one possibility. For this other equation, let's distribute that negative now. So x minus 4 equals negative 3x minus 2. Let's move negative 3x to the left to get 4x. And move the minus 4 to the right so we get this equals 2. And then dividing by 4, we get x equals 2 fourths, which is 1 half. Alrighty, so we got these values for x. The next step is I need to check for extraneous solutions. So extraneous solutions. Sometimes when I solve an equation, I'll end up with answers that don't actually work when I plug them back in to my equation. And that's what an extraneous solution is. An answer that I get that doesn't actually work when I plug it back in. And it turns out that that can happen if I have an equation with absolute values. And we'll talk about why a little bit later. But for right now, let's do our check. So let's first plug in x equals negative 3 into our equation. Let me zoom it out a little bit so we can see the equation. Alrighty, so if I plug in negative 3, we get absolute value of negative 3 minus 4. Um, and I am just going to plug it in. I'm going to plug it into this step. I can plug it into any step before I got rid of the absolute value. So I could plug it into the original if I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and just plug it into the step where the absolute value was isolated. That's just personal preference. All right. So this is going to be equal to, I want to know if this equals 3 times plug in negative 3 for that x, plus 2. And I'll put a question mark above my equal sign because I don't know if they're equal just yet. Alrighty, so I just uh, zoomed it out, I think, a little bit more there, but so I wanted to see this whole thing. On the left, I get the absolute value of negative 7. On the right, we get negative 9 plus 2, which is negative 7. So are these equal to each other, question mark? Well, the absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7, and that is definitely not equal to, let's put a slash, not equal to negative 7. That means that this answer is extraneous. So I'll put a slash through it and write EXTR to abbreviate for extraneous. Alrighty, now I have to check my other answer, which was X equals 1 half. So let's plug that in to our equation. So I'll get absolute value of 1 half minus 4. And I want to know if this equals, so I put a question mark, 3 times 1 half plus 2. 
And now let's simplify both sides. So the left-hand side, 1 half minus 4 is negative 7 halves. And I want to know if this equals. So 3 times a half is going to be 3 halves. 3 halves added to 2, if I get a common denominator, is going to be 7 halves. And when I absolute value negative 7 halves on the left, it'll become positive. So 7 halves equals 7 halves. And these are equal, so I'll put a check mark. And that means x equals 1 half does work. So x equals 1 half is the only answer to this equation. One of my answers was extraneous. All right. So now I want to pose that question I alluded to before, which is why can we get extraneous solutions in equations where I have an absolute value of some stuff? So the answer is when I have the absolute value of some stuff in an equation, this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Once I take the absolute value of whatever that is, it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. But when we solve equations like this, we get rid of the absolute value of some, at some point. But when we get rid of the absolute values, we remove this restriction. This restriction that that whole absolute value of stuff term needs to be greater than or equal to zero, that's gone when I get rid of the absolute values. And when I remove a restriction like that, it can give us extra answers that don't always work. And that happened in this previous example. So sometimes when I'm checking for extraneous solutions, all the answers that I get will work. Sometimes none of them will work. And sometimes, like in this example, some of them will work and some of them won't. All right, so I want to end this video by just summarizing what are all the situations where we need to check for extraneous solutions in an equation. So we check for extraneous solutions if our equation We've seen one of the situations, if it has variables inside of an absolute value, inside an absolute value. The second case we're going to see in the next video, which is if our equation has variables inside even roots. So by even roots, e.g., for example, I mean like a square root or a fourth root. A square root is technically a second root or a sixth root. Those are even roots. The third situation is when uh, our equation, sorry, this should be, if, if our equation uses log rules to simplify it, and the fourth situation is if our equation has variables in the denominator. In all of these situations, we should check for extraneous solutions after we get our answers.